Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here and welcome back to the railway once again, it's lovely to have your company as always. And welcome to the first of a brand new series of running days. Uh, now this isn't going to be a new series per se, uh, in that it's going to come out every week. Uh, it's going to be a, very much an ongoing thing uh, that will have several instalments throughout the course of the year. And uh, I've got seven uh, of these episodes planned and they're all going to be based uh, from different ages um, of British steam locomotives. And this is the first one of locomotives from the 1800s, and then I'm going to have one from the 1900s, 1910s, 1920s, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, so hopefully you'll enjoy these. Um, I've got six locos to show you today, and uh, we'll get started straight away. I'll get the ball rolling, or the rolling stock rolling, I suppose, and uh, we'll see uh, the first loco. So here she is. And I'm fairly sure this one uh, is the oldest locomotive I've got in my collection. Uh, not the oldest model, of course, um, but the oldest in real life. And of course it's the very strange uh, but very uh, iconic um, Stevenson's Rocket, which dates back to 1829, so way back in the past of course, and uh, I'll tell you all about her in just a moment. Uh, but first let's get her out of that siding so that you can see her properly, uh, I'll just grab that point. There we go, and I'll just give her a little bit of juice, and hopefully, I mean she is a little bit rough this one, uh, as you might already know, uh, hopefully she'll come out of there without a, a, too much of a fuss. So here she goes, nope, wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great start. Here we go. I've got to give her a good bit of speed, otherwise she won't get over those points. And I'll just stop her there. <laughs> She's not the smoothest of runners, as you can see. Uh, but there's a nice close look at Stevenson's rocket anyway. I suppose you could call this one an 022, but I'm not sure if that's strictly correct. And uh, of course she's got that very strange looking tender with her, um, as well as one coach. But you could um, add as many coaches as you want really, as long as she'll pull them. Uh, but yep, that's Stevenson's rocket. Uh, very unique. Um, not a very practical model to be honest. Uh, but it is quite the spectacle I suppose. So yep, anyway, let's get her up and running and I'll tell you all about her. Here we go. So yes, it's always pretty fast and furious when the rocket starts going, and of course the loco in real life would never have gone anywhere near this quick uh, in terms of scale speed. But yeah, classic locomotive, uh, built in 1829 by Robert Stevenson and Company, and it was really one of the first locomotives to be deemed successful, and it actually won the Rainhill Trials in 1829, um, and it was built for this competition actually. And uh, it was a competition where different engines uh, would compete together um, in order to be chosen uh, to run on the Liverpool and Manchester Railway. And it is still around today, although I don't think it's run for a good few years. Uh, and you can see it, if you want to, uh, in the London Science Museum. Right, well I'm going to let her have a quick rest there then. <laughs> There's certainly a rich smell in the air. Um, and it's definitely a distinct bouquet. Uh, so I don't want to run her for too long, she might get a bit too hot and uh, boil over, so we wouldn't want that. So, yep, she can rest there for a second, and while she does, um, I will show you the next loco. And then, of course, we'll come back to the rocket, and uh, we'll let her run again uh, alongside the second loco. But still, here she is, I'll introduce her right now. Or I should say, really, uh, I'll introduce them, uh, because now we're moving on to 1846, a little bit later, um, to the Iron Duke class, and I'll tell you all about those uh, later on, but I wanted to run more than one coach, uh, so naturally I have to double-head them. Uh, so the one at the front there isn't too great, but the one at the back is in near enough mint condition, and uh, they're going to be pulling three Great Western coaches, and between them that shouldn't be uh, too much trouble, uh, but of course they only do run on <laughs> one set of driving wheels each, so it's not a great deal of power there, uh, but still, let's get those out out and I'll show you those. Uh, so I'll just flick that point there and uh, I'll bring them round to the front for you. And of course the beauty of double heading them uh, is that they don't stall on the points because they help each other along so that's very useful as well. So I'll stop those there then so you can have a good look. Um, they're both Lord of the Isles of course, um, but this one at the front uh, isn't in great condition. Uh, but if I move you down to the one at the back there, uh, you can see she is in a lot better shape. And uh, beautiful engines running number 3046. And uh, as I already said, uh, they're pulling three great western coaches. So without any further ado then, let's get these up and running as well. Uh, and I'll tell you all about them, or as much as I know about them, which is not a great deal. But here we go. Okay, so I've managed to get these to run at a nice, uh, stable, gentle speed, so hopefully uh, it'll be nice to see them not racing round for once. Uh, but yeah, Lord of the Isles, so it was part of the Iron Duke class, uh, the first of which appeared in 1846 uh, as a prototype, and it was designed by Daniel Gooch. 
Um, it was probably the fastest loco um, of the time, uh, capable of about 80 miles an hour, and uh, the locos were all withdrawn uh, in 1870, and Lord of the Isles, uh, the one that's running now, was actually preserved, but then it was scrapped in 1907 uh, due to them having no space for her, which is a little bit of a shame, I suppose. Um, and uh, Lord of the Isles itself uh, was built in 1851 and withdrawn in 1884 uh, after 33 years of service. Alright, so let's get Stevenson's rocket up and running then, and we'll have a little uh, quick few shots uh, of them running together. There you go, I've got these at a bit more of a speed now, uh, just so that you can see that they can race round if they want to. And I think Rocket's certainly running a bit better after her rest as well, she's certainly flying along. Go. Yep, all oh, looks good anyway. Um, good old trying stuff, of course, very reliable. Right, I'm going to stuff these locos back into their sidings then, and then we'll move on and uh, see what we've got next. Okay, and next up I've got another single wheeler. This time it's the Hornby Maroon version, which I've never actually shown uh, on the channel. Uh, so if you want me to unbox that one, uh, it's in very special packaging. Uh, I will unbox that one if you want to see it. Uh, but for now, she's got some Caledonian, well, ex-Caledonian coaches, uh, which have been uh, converted to LMS. And this loco, as you can see, um, is probably modelled uh, in the days when it was inherited by the LMS. Uh, so that's why it's in maroon. Anyway, let's get those points and uh, we'll get her out of that siding. And as you can see, this one really is absolutely beautiful. Uh, I'll just stop her there then, so you can have a good look. And as you noticed, uh, probably she does pull uh, a lot more than Lord of the Isles does. She manages those three coaches uh, just fine. But yep, as you can see, 14010, uh, which is presumably her LMS running number. And there she is, the beautiful Caledonian 123. And uh, I'll get her running now and uh, tell you all about her once again. So here we go then, let's see if she can start up uh, on this straight. In fact, I'll move her back a little bit just so that she can have a bit of speed by the time she gets to that point. So yeah, let's try this. Yeah, she managed it. There we go. So yes, uh, the Caledonian single, uh, originally known as the Caledonian single 123, yeah, but of course her running number was changed uh, during the LMS period. And uh, she was built by Nielsen and Company in 1886 and was completely unique. There was no others of her kind built. Um, she ran on only two driving wheels, as you can see, which were 84 inches in diameter, which is 7 feet. Um, so absolutely huge, as you can tell. And uh, she was absorbed into the LMS in 1923 and classified as a 1P while she was there. Um, since the 1970s, though, uh, she's been retired. Uh, she hasn't run since then, I don't think. And uh, right now she's on a static display uh, in Glasgow in the Riverside Museum.
Okay, so I'm just going to stop her nearby then. Uh, just there should do fine. There we go. And uh, while she waits there, uh, I'll show you the fourth loco of the day. Okay, so I know uh, everything's been triangle really old uh, up to now. So this time, this one is quite a, a modern and new locomotive uh, from recent times. It's the Backman Ellen YR Class 5. And this was from 1889, uh, so a little bit later on than the likes of the single wheelers. Uh, and uh, Stevenson's Rocket, of course, and it's a beautiful uh, 242 loco, which is very, very unique. Oh yes, and she's pulling some blood and custard coaches, uh, which I'm told would have been suitable for a loco of that type, um, certainly later on in life, though. Uh, so let me just get that point, and uh, yeah, let's get her going. And this one really is brilliantly quiet and smooth from Backman. It really is a gorgeous model. And uh, she's just coming down to the front now. And uh, when she gets there, I'll uh, give you a few close-ups of her. Uh, there we go, gradually coming to a stop. And I'll just pause her there so that you can see a close-up. There you go. And that's number 10713 from the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway. Uh, so, yep, a gorgeous little loco. Very interesting wheel configuration. And if you're interested in the loco, you can of course uh, look at my review of her, which I did a few weeks ago. Uh, but yeah, fantastically detailed loco. Really is beautiful. Uh, let's get her running again then. And uh, I'll tell you uh, a little bit about the class and uh, their history. So, here she goes. So there she goes anyway, the gorgeous LNYR Class 5 tank engine, and she really is just the most brilliant, smooth and gorgeous runner that you could ever hope for. And uh, as I say, she originated from the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway, and she was designed by J.A.F. Aspinall, and first appeared in 1889, and later classified as a 2P locomotive. Uh, in total, there was an awful lot built, uh, considering uh, the, the age, uh, 310 in total, uh, but sadly only one uh, has been preserved, and it is in fact the only British 242 locomotive uh, in preservation, and you can find that at the NRM, uh, I think, unless it isn't there, unless it's on loan somewhere, but uh, yeah, uh, it's owned by the NRM anyway, so I'll leave her to run a little bit longer, and then I'll start the single wheeler up again. Okay, and to join her then I'll restart the Caledonian, well not Caledonian anymore, uh, the single wheeler and uh, we'll see how she gets on. There she goes. So yeah, they go well these two do. Uh, of course both LMS logos at some point. Uh, there goes the single wheeler with her Caledonian coaches, finally a use for them. And you can probably see now uh, the method to my madness uh, for buying those coaches. So, yeah, pleased I did that. They seem to look really nice with her. And we won't forget the gorgeous Class 5 tank, which just snakes along silently, as you can see. Uh, I can't recommend that model enough, really. It's just such quality, and yet such charm as well. So, it's quite rare, I suppose. Alright, so I'll put these guys, or girls, back into their sidings then, and then I'll move on to the next couple of locos, uh, which is the last two, which is a shame, but only until next time. <laughs> so, yep, let's get on with that.
Okay, so now we're moving on to right at the end of the 1800s uh, to 1897 uh, with this pannier tank. And I didn't realise that the panniers were as old as that, uh, but some of them were apparently. And uh, this one is a member of the 2721 class, uh, the GWR of course. And uh, you can tell it uh, because it never had a, a cab roof as you can see, which is quite an iconic feature of this one. And uh, yeah, apparently 1897. Uh, so I'll just get that point. And uh, she's pulling some freight by the way, uh, mixed freight really, uh, with a great Western Guards van. And uh, I'll give her a little bit of juice and I'll get her out of those points and I'll bring her around to the front so that you can see her. We got a good smooth run of this one as well. The Hornby one. There goes all that freight. Okay, so I'll just bring her to a stop there then, and I'll give you a nice close look at her. Uh, so as you can see, uh, she's running number 2783, and uh, of course she's a beautiful 060 tank engine from Hornby. Uh, this one's quite old, I think it was from the 90s or something, uh, the 1990s that is, the model. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, So yeah, it was older than I thought uh, in real life, uh, but yeah, there she is, uh, and with her freight, uh, I'll get her to start off again, and uh, we'll see how she gets on with it. And of course I'll fill you in on all the information I know about her, so here we go. Perfect smooth start. There she goes. So yes, the GWR 2721 pannier tank. Uh, this one uh, pulling from the front of the loco for a change. I just thought that would make a nice difference uh, to the usual uh, way of doing things. Uh, so apparently the design of the pannier, uh, or of this class, dated back to 1890 and was based on the 1854 class, uh, which was William Dean's design. And this logo was William Dean's design and it first appeared in 1897 and there was a total of 80 of these engines built. Um, over the years they were all eventually rebuilt and modified and uh, of course the final variation of the panniers appeared in 1948, which was apparently the 9400 class. Uh, so yeah, a very interesting locomotive uh, which evolved gradually over time of course. And uh, I'll let her run for a little longer, and then I'll introduce you to the final loco of the day. Alright, so she's just stopped there then, uh, while I introduce you to that last loco. And I couldn't help myself really, I had to go with this one. And this is of course a Drummond's 700 class, uh, which is also from 1897, and it's a gorgeous 060 tender locomotive. And uh, it really is lovely, and I did a review of it uh, not too long ago, uh, so sorry to bring it back so soon, but uh, it's one of those that I just uh, instantly fell in love with, so uh, yes, I'm going to be running her as much as I can, <laughs> within reason. And uh, she's pulling some wagons, she's got some stones in wagons there, uh, some Southern Railway animal livestock wagons, uh, some prime pork and a brake van on there. Uh, but let's get those points, and let's get her out, shall we? Uh, a tiny little bit of juice then, here we go, a nice gentle crawl start, hopefully. There we go. Uh, no struggling at all uh, with all that rolling stuff, of course. And I'll bring her to a stop just there. And uh, hopefully you can see just how beautiful this one is. And uh, as I said in the review, I just love these green stripes. They're just really fantastic. And I thought this would be a brilliant one to end with. So, uh, yep, yeah, let's get her uh, cranked up again. And uh, while she runs around on her own, I'll give you uh, some information on the class. Again, I know I've already told you all about her, but uh, I'll do it again just in case people didn't see the review. Uh, so, here we go. There's all those wagons. Yep, all looks good. Freight locomotive, of course. So yes, the 700 class uh, first appeared on the LSWR in 1897 to the design of Dougal Drummond. And uh, in total there were 30 of these engines produced, which again is quite a lot uh, for the period. And they're all rebuilt over the years and modified and uh, changed from their original design. And uh, sadly though, all were scrapped 
um, even the ones that have been modified over the years, all scrapped, uh, none of them have been preserved, which is a shame. And uh, the last ones disappeared in 1962 after a massive 65 years of service. Uh, so, yep, enjoy her for a second longer and then we'll start the pannier tank, shall we? Alright, so let's get the pannier tank up and running then for one last uh, little running session of the day. Uh, so there she goes. Good smooth performance as always. Yep, and let me film one last run then, let's do it. She's got a little bit of a tick to her, this one has. Um, but she's only just been serviced and there's really nothing wrong with her, so yep, <laughs> it's just fine. And there's the 700 class. Which I really, really do like. Hats off to Hornby with it, really. I'm still buzzing about it. <laughs> uh, it really is a good creation uh, by Hornby. Especially in light of what's happened recently with them. New signal box, of course. Uh, still getting bedded in. Still getting used to seeing it, really. It's a bit strange still, but I'll get used to it. It's not a big deal, is it? So here we go then, one last train ride I'll give you, uh, just so that you can see everything on the layout that's been out today, see if you can spot them all, here we go. Well, that's it for now then anyway, that's locomotives from the 1800s, and uh, there's plenty more to come. Uh, it might not necessarily be the next running video, uh, but certainly the next one of these will be uh, featuring locomotives uh, from the first 10 years of the 1900s. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, uh, please don't hesitate to leave a like and a comment, because it's lovely to hear from you guys. And if you want to, you can also check out the Facebook or Twitter pages at facebook.com forward slash samstrains, or twitter.com forward slash samstrains. It would be lovely to see you on there, but for now, a big thank you to you all for watching. I really do appreciate it, and uh, I'll see you all very soon. Cheers, everybody.